They bagged my head with a black bag, handcuffed me, put me in the van, and started screaming at me in Russian. Terry Gately, a minister from Texas, went to Kherson before the Russian invasion to visit his girlfriend and do volunteer work. He experienced firsthand the abuses by Russian authorities in occupied areas of Ukraine, exposed in a new report from Human Rights Watch, and also a newly declassified assessment from the U.S.'s Director of National Intelligence. They document Russia's arbitrary detention of civilians and of torturing individuals in so-called filtration camps. U.S. intelligence has identified 18 such facilities the Russians use to decide whom to send to Russia, in many cases for imprisonment. The Russians occupied Kherson so fast in the first days of the war, few could escape. I just happened to be in the one place that the Russians took on the first day. If I would have been anywhere else, I would have said, oh, there's a war? Well, I got to go. But that didn't happen. Gailey recorded photos and video of an increasingly terrifying life under Russian occupation. Just walking through like it's a normal day. I know you had to hear that one. You can't use your debit card anywhere because now they're saying, oh, this is part of Russia. The way Russia does things when they occupy they let you know it's theirs right from the get-go, and then they, they're like a, like a python. It wraps itself around you, and as you exhale a little bit, it gets tighter. In fact, Russian intelligence agents grabbed him off the street one day for questioning, throwing a bag over his head. I'm a 63-year-old nobody. I mean, really, you search everything about me, you'll find out nothing, because I am nothing. They let me go after three hours and said I had to make three videos. Wait, you were doing propaganda videos? Yeah, it's on the internet. They said I had to make three videos and I agreed and they let me go. They agreed to take me to the American Embassy in Moscow safely. At that point, U.S. Embassy staff in Ukraine had long since evacuated, but he says the State Department was following his case. The State Department the next day called me and said, under no circumstances whatsoever do you do that unless they force you. Do you understand? I mean, they were adamant. Heeding the State Department's advice, he told the Russians he didn't want to go to Russia and finally decided to escape Kherson. On our last trap was built. His escape was orchestrated by a group of American soldiers who had led rescues in Afghanistan and then in Ukraine. We knew Terry was radioactive. He had been arrested a few times. So to get someone like Terry out, do you have to work with the Russians? So work with the Russians is the wrong way of saying it. Work against the Russians and play chess against the Russians is more accurate. Brian Stern, who heads the volunteer rescue group Project Dynamo, told Gately to get on a specific bus that would take him to safety. The bus driver will know you. The password is white Mercedes. We have people on the bus that you don't know about, but they'll take it from there. But he says over 50 Russian checkpoints stood between him and freedom. Every time they saw I was an American, but this time they took me off the bus kept me there, looked through my phone, and I'm a licensed to carry instructor for the state of Texas. So I got a lot of gun pictures. They swore up and down that I came to Ukraine to train people to use guns. The Russians took him to a local prison, similar to the filtration camps many are facing. Gately said he was tortured by not being allowed to sleep for more than three days. Every 15 minutes, they uh, came in and said, no sleep. He says he heard the screams of other prisoners who he thought were being tortured. Then, suddenly, that explanation, the Russians let him go, abandoning him on a street outside Kherson. Took off the bag, and there was a guy standing there, and he goes, you want to go to Zaporozhye? And I'm like, I sure do. From the evacuees' perspective, these random things just seem to happen or, or whatever, and really everything is for a reason. Stern won't say how exactly he arranged for Gately to get to safety and return to the U.S., but Gately was fortunate. Untold Ukrainians and even some Americans who disappeared are still missing. That newly declassified U.S. intelligence assessment offers an indication why the State Department was so adamant that Terry not go to Russia to refuse if he could, and he fortunately was able to. And that's because they say that people who are being taken to Russia, Ukraine's being taken to Russia, some of them are ending up as far as the border with North Korea. Chance?